Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're diving into a hard leak code problem that's all about finding the best way to fit rectangles onto a grid. It's called find the minimum area to cover all ones too. Don't let the hard label scare you. We'll break it down step by step. Okay, so here's the official problem statement. I'll give you the simple version. We're given a grid of zeros and ones. Our job is to find three rectangles that together cover up all of the ones in the grid. So to be clear, we get a grid. We have to draw exactly three rectangles on it. These rectangles can't overlap, but they are allowed to touch at the edges. The most important rule is that every single one must be covered. Our goal is to find the three rectangles that do this with the smallest possible total area. Let's look at this simple example. We have five ones to cover. How can we do it with three rectangles? Well, we could cover the two ones in the first column with one rectangle of area too. Then, the two ones in the last column can be another rectangle, also with an area of two. That leaves just one one in the middle, which we can cover with a tiny rectangle of area one. So the total area would be two plus two plus one, which equals five. And it turns out, that's the best we can do for this grid. So how do we even start? Trying to place three random rectangles anywhere sounds like a nightmare. The trick is to stop thinking about placing rectangles and start thinking about cutting the grid. If we can slice the grid into three separate zones, then our problem becomes much simpler. Just find the smallest possible rectangle to cover the ones in each zone. It turns out there are really only six fundamental ways you can divide a rectangle into three smaller ones. You can make two horizontal cuts, or two vertical cuts, or you can make one big cut, and then slice one of the resulting halves. Notice a pattern here. The bottom three are just 90 degree rotations of the top three. This is a huge simplification. It means we only need to write code for a few cases, and then we can just rotate the grid and run the same code again. The solution in the editorial simplifies even further and just focuses on the two parallel cut cases, which we'll look at now. So here's the game plan. We'll check every possible way to make two horizontal cuts. This splits the grid into a top, middle, and bottom piece. For each of those pieces, we'll calculate the smallest rectangle needed to cover its ones. This x, we sum up those three areas. Then we do it all again, but for every possible pair of vertical cuts. By checking all these combinations, we're guaranteed to find the minimum total area for these two patterns. First we need a helper function. Its job is to look at a specific section of the grid and find the area of the smallest possible rectangle that covers all the ones inside just that section. It works by finding the topmost, bottommost, leftmost and rightmost one, Tarkaloria. That defines our bounding box. If there are no ones in the section, the area is simply zero. Now for the main logic. This function handles one orientation, let's say, horizontal cuts. We use two nested loops to represent our two cuts. The first loop picks the first cut line, i dollars i spings. The second loop picks the second cut line, j, which has to be below i dollars i spings. This gives us our top, middle, and bottom regions. We then use our helper to get the area for each, add them up, and see if it's the best total we've found so far. We also make sure each region actually contains at least one one. Finally, the main function brings it all together. First, we call our solver function on the original grid to check all the horizontal slice combinations. Then comes the clever part. Instead of writing new logic for vertical slices, we just rotate the entire grid 90 degrees and run the exact same horizontal solver on it. This covers the vertical slice case perfectly. We take the minimum result from both orientations, and that's our answer for these two main patterns. So how efficient is this? For the horizontal cuts, we have roughly n squared pairs of cuts. For each pair, our helper function scans the whole grid, which takes n times m operations. That gives us a total time of about order n cubed times m quadrat to n. The same logic applies to the rotated grid, giving us m cubed times n. The space complexity is determined by the need to create a copy of the grid for rotation, which takes order n times m space. So to wrap up, the big idea here is divide and conquer. Quanja tough. We simplified a tricky problem by thinking about how to slice up the grid first. The rotation trick is a fantastic takeaway for any grid problem. It lets you handle vertical and horizontal cases with the same code. And finally, this approach shows that sometimes, a well-structured brute force enumeration of all the possibilities is the key. I hope that breakdown made sense. If this was helpful, please hit that like button, and maybe subscribe for more explanations like this. If you have any questions or a different way to solve it, drop a comment below, and if you're feeling extra supportive, the Boba Fund is always appreciated. Keep coding, and I'll see you in the next one.